All right. So I'm showing this stuff mainly because nobody likes the quadratic formula. People think they like the quadratic formula, and a lot of them do think that they like the quadratic formula. Um, but if it's an easy problem, there's usually like they're doing a whole lot more work when it just factored very nicely. They're like, I did all that work for nothing. Um, the big problem mainly is the quadratic formula creates larger numbers than you usually are needed and they end up having, you know, something funny like something that, here we go, really two. They have that and then they don't reduce that properly. They'll, they'll make it three or they'll and get three plus or minus two on the square root of 21. They'll, they'll do lots of mistakes with that big ugly fraction and they do a lot of work inside the radical and they'll pull things out where there's just, there's lots of places to make mistakes. It's beautiful because it's great for proofs. Um, I use the quadratic formula a lot just to show that my new methods work. So um, a lot of kids in have in their mind, especially if they start doing factoring early, that factoring is like their friend. And if they can factor everything, life would be great. And at least me in the past, I've also said, I've, been, I've said many times, yes, you need to have something as a backup plan for factoring because factoring won't always work because you get the thing and you'll have, looking at the product and you'll see lots of factors and none of them could possibly get the thing you want or the numbers are ugly and you just can't find it. By the way, I'm not yet at the stage where like, if I see the thing, if I look at like, ooh, these guys are gonna multiply and it's gonna work great. It, I'm never gonna say, don't, don't go straight to that thing because this is not the fastest process. Um, I love completing the square as my back of my go-to thing. Um, but this right here is one I'm gonna right now call forced factoring because this will always work. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna prove them that it always works. I'm gonna show you some easy problems, some hard problems, some ugly things, and like some that are like needlessly more complex, but still compared to other things are better. So there's four steps to make sure that your thing always factors, but this doesn't just factor, you're technically factoring early. I'm gonna go straight to the solution. So it's four steps to solve any quadratic. I like this because it kind of separates and you can see the pieces um, and it keeps the kids from trying to do too much math at once. That makes any sense. The, my biggest drawback with the quadratic formula is they have all of their numbers out there and they're looking at the whole answer right away. And they have, um, well, I guess technically they have all of that math at once, right? And there's so many places to make a mistake. There's losing that negative, dealing with that negative, those two negative signs together. You're misadding and you use, like you feel the whole pressure of that whole big ugly fraction the whole time they're working on it. There's a negative down here. There's like, like so many kids like see that, oh, perfect square. Of course, that's all we can do, perfect square. And who they want to pull pieces out and they want to like combine things. And they're tempted to do more math than they should be doing at a time. Which is one of the reasons why I like breaking the problem, problem into pieces so that they aren't tempted to do too much too fast. I slow them down and give them actually less steps to do. All right, just air. So if I have this first, I'm gonna prove that it works and that I'm not lying to you. So I'm gonna do my four steps and build the quadratic formula using this. So my first, so if I have ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, it doesn't get more basic than that. My first step is to, and this is an arrow. Maybe it's not even that. Technically, it is negative b, but we're going to square it right away. So half b, so plus b, so it's b over 2. And save that as the center. That's going to be my little center guy. I'm going to write as I see center. That's my thing. So I have that. That's math I'm going to actually do. If that's an 8, I'm going to say, ooh, 4 is my middle. Divide that by two. I'm not gonna mess with the A up first. I'm gonna actually say the A for a while. That's all step one. Just note what that middle is. If it's a fraction, I think, oh, that's no fun. If it's not a fraction, I think score. 
but I got to know that I already get used to that number is going to be there. All right. So I have my center that I just got squared minus A times C. That's going to equal my distance squared. Bear with me. This might seem like a lot, but it's, you're going to, when we actually get to the actual numbers, it's a lot nicer. So I have that guy. That's my step two. Just get that thing in there. I'm usually going to be calculating this. Get that to a number. Step three is square root both sides and clean it up. So square root both sides of my distance. B squared over four, that's what B over two squared is, minus AC, right? And I'm going to clean that up. So I'm just focusing on this and making it look as nice as possible. Well, no one likes a square root with a fraction and a subtraction problem. So I'm going to get a common denominator. B squared over four minus that's, I'm putting times four over four, right? So that's four AC, hey, that seems familiar, over four. Since they're both two, the subtraction of a fraction is not nearly as fun as the square root of a fraction. B squared minus four AC all over four. Can't have a fraction inside my square root, I can take the square root of the bottom. So that's just gonna be the square root of B squared minus four AC all over the square root of four is two. Now I've cleaned that up, right? That's all step three. I've done all of that little work in the, my answer, step four is right down your answer. X equals negative center, so negative. What was my center way back when I wrote over it? It was B over two. Plus or minus this guy. And then divide it all by A. Now you think that's not the quadratic formula? Sure it is. Uh, fraction inside a fraction, right? So I keep the top, change that division multiplication and flip the bottom guy. So that's one over A times negative B over two plus or minus square root of, got my square root symbol got carried away. Y'all didn't stop me. Probably because you're on video. That. The first time I've made that mistake. Don't talk bad about me yet. Plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2. You want to combine that fraction or you want to distribute first? Too bad you didn't answer. So x equals, I'm going to combine that fraction, 1 over a parentheses negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2. And now I'm going to just put that a in the bottom. Multiply straight across. Negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2. That's the quadratic formula. So I did my four steps, I didn't break any math rules, and I got to the quadratic formula. That means that my four steps are legal. All right. Now let's like actually see why those four steps are helpful. I'm going to throw out some problems. Some of them are going to be easy, some of them are going to be not so easy. Um, 3x squared minus x minus 4 equals 0. All right? Yes, it factors. I can look and say, ooh, negative 4. I'm going to have negative 4 and 3. They could be 12. They could be boom, boom. We can go. And yes, it factors. It'll work. So be sure I know the answer is. But I'm going to take half of B. Great. My B is negative 1. So that's negative 1 half. I'm going to say that. I can write it in the center. I'm going to put this over here. Hold on to that guy. All right. That's it. That's step one. Make a note of it. Tell them to take it to the side. Write it down somewhere. Put it in a box. Put it in a square. Take it out of the problem, hold on to that, don't lose your center. Now I'm gonna have my center squared. Negative one half squared is one fourth. I did start as an ugly one. 
minus a times c, a times c, that's negative 12. That's going to equal my distance squared. I'm going to write d. Well, this isn't so fun now, is it? Fractions. Who likes fractions? I don't know about you guys, but I like to just get rid of them all by multiplying everybody by the denominator. So that's one mine, uh, that's me plus four times 12 equals 4d squared. Four times 12 is 48, plus one is 49. Convenient. Um, square, well, I'll take divide by four. So 49 over four equals d squared. That's my two. Get d, simplify your number, get d squared. Step three is square root both sides and clean up. If I take the square root, I get the right plus or minus. I'll take care of that on step four anyways. But square root of 49 over four is seven over two. That's my distance. Now I've done all that, made that all work. Now, I'm just writing my answer. X equals my center is negative one half plus or minus my distance, which is seven over two. Then I'm gonna divide by my A, which happened to be three. Don't let your people panic about this. A lot of times I'll just deal with the top, get my two answers and then say, all right, now divide by your A. Negative one half plus seven halves leaves me with six halves, which is three. Three over three, that's gonna be one. Negative one half minus seven halves is negative eight over two. That's negative four over three. So x equals one comma negative four over three. You know, that was going to be a nice factorable one, but they can get there. This one doesn't really win over anything other than the quadratic formula because it factors well at the beginning. Force factoring is not going to be a winner if it actually factors, which kind of makes sense because the quadratic formula seems kind of like I did all that work just to get two and six. Same thing. That's why factoring itself is great. If I go to this as soon as I don't, as soon as I get stuck, if I don't even say, ooh, multiplies to 12 and subtracts to one. If I can't get there in like 10 seconds because I'm impatient, I go force factoring. Um, it's nice because they've already seen those numbers then. So we'll get there. Let's do one and show you where this thing gets a little bit more powerful. So that, if you look at that, Ugly, ugly. Um, let's go with a nice one. X squared plus five x minus six. This is actually not a nice one. Yeah, we'll do it anyways. Equals zero. All right, we're there. Half of b, five over two. Save that. Square. Minus a times c, a, c, that's just negative six. Distance squared. Again, I don't like dealing with fractions. I can make that 24 over four and then do the whole thing. Multiply everybody by four. So that's 25 plus 24. Equals, is this gonna be 49 again over four? That's gonna be exact same. And we'll get there. Equals 4d squared. That's 49. All right? 49 over 4 equals d squared. Take the square root. I get 7 over 2. I really did not do that on purpose. All right? I have that. Just trying to show you. I'd like to focus on this top. Get numbers. I divide by a last. So negative center, center is negative five over two plus four minus seven over two. And I see what these numbers are. Negative five plus seven is positive two over two, which is one. Negative five minus seven is negative 12 over two, which is negative six. And I put them both over my A, which just ended up being one. 
So x equals one comma negative six. Again, that one factored nice. Let's see. This thing comes really powerful when you have ugly numbers. Let's do one that's got lots of ugliness. Three x squared plus four x plus five equals zero. And this is one where the kids will look at it and they'll say, "Ooh, nice numbers." They'll try to factor because then they'll go three times five is fifteen. Has to multiply to fifteen and add up to four. That's not going to be fun, right? And then they're like, "That's where they end up like they're to see that their confidence goes down, all that good stuff, because it looks so nice until they start doing the math." So you say, "Great, half of b is two. Hold on to that, right?" But just watch so this. This thing actually works better and better the worse the numbers are. So I take my center squared, that's four, minus AC, minus three times five is 15. That's gonna be my distance squared. Four minus 15, that's negative 11. That's all of step two. Step three, square root on both sides and clean. Square root of that guy is just I, so I have square root of 11. I equals my distance. You can do plus or minus, but I have that written down the next step too. So it depends on where you want to focus this with people. All right. Now I'm ready for my answer. X equals negative center, that's negative two, plus or minus distance, square root 11i. Clean anything I can clean. Done cleaning. There's nothing there all over my a which was three and that is going to be the answer i know that because i approved the quadrat for me and it's already cleaned up it's nice i'm there final form this is where it becomes really really powerful for me um let's do another one that looks simple but it isn't i ah, never stop doing that piercing so let's say i have x squared plus 2x Minus two equals zero. This is another one that frustrates kids. I don't know what you guys, but my students usually get frustrated when they have easy looking numbers where the math does not cooperate. They're like, ooh, it looks simple. It should be simple the whole time. Why aren't you cooperating? This one looks beautiful. It's not. Because I need two numbers that multiply to negative two and then out of two. And I get stuck. So I say, great. I want this to factor. I need to force it to factor because it should. Half of B is one on my center. Center squared, that's just one. Minus A times C is negative two. And that's my distance squared. One plus two is just three. Right? Step three, square root both sides and clean up is the square root of three. So x equals my negative center, that's negative one, plus or minus square root of three, all over my a, which was just one. So note, that was it, boom, 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 that's all I have for my work. If I was into this quadratic formula, I'd have x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus four ac. All over to A. Notice that this is boom, 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 boom. I had to add one plus two is three. Note the square root of three. And just that. If I went, if I saw the factory wasn't going to work and I jumped to the quadratic formula, I have this. And I have to say, great, four, negative four, negative two makes that positive. Note that that's eight, that's 12. So I have negative two plus or minus the square root of 12 all over two. And then I have to recognize that 12 has a perfect square of four inside it. So I can pull out the square root of four, which is two. It gives me the square root of three over two. And then I have to reduce that fraction correctly and realize that it's not a fraction anymore. And I have to have x equals 
negative one plus or minus the square root of three. And I just see a lot of places to make wherever I have a bunch of math written together, it's so easy to make mistakes. And I really like taking sections out and say, all right, hold on to that. Don't let it play with the other things. Focus on this. And I like this method because it, even though it, A, it always works, but it focuses them down that little step by step, where even if I had to get common denominators to get rid of fractions at a step, I didn't have a bunch of other math going on around me. Um, and I think that's helpful. Uh, I think that's it. That's force factoring, four steps. And noticing that a lot of the steps are simple. No step is like this right here is probably the ugliest step ever because they have to square that and then at times may have to get common denominators here. But while they may have to get common denominators there, that's the only thing they have to do, right? There's not a bunch of other math there confusing them while they're trying to get common denominators. So like, I think like our kids, at least my kids, they can do almost any math if they're focused on that one type of math and they don't have five other things staring them in the face. Um, or at least that's just the way my AP works. All right, I think that's it. I'm hoping that I'm not going to have time. I may refine this in the future. I'm not sure, but right now that's where I am with it. All right, thank you.